fossil fuel companies are just like so excited about this dynamic where consumers are just fighting each other over tiny tiny things they're so excited that we're attacking each other rather than looking at what they're doing hello everybody and welcome back to my channel my name is Gita Mary and happy Earth Month April is officially Earth Month and I asked you guys what kind of videos you would want for Earth Month if they would be different from my normal content not a whole lot but I'm going to get into some of the more basic things here and some of the things I've talked about before but in a new format etc I deliver what you ask of me one thing that was requested over and over for me to talk about and something that's been requested for a long time I have one video that's a year and a half old or something much related to this but how to talk to people who doesn't believe in climate change. How to talk to climate change deniers or skeptics? And that's a really good question. Something that I think is intensely important that we talk about within the community, because overall it all comes down to how do we communicate our messages to people who do not share our values and beliefs. That is incredibly important because we need everybody on board to one extent or another, but I'll get more into that anyway. I already have a video where I go over sort of how to talk to people in your family that doesn't believe in climate change. This is going to be a little bit broader, so just anybody from people you meet randomly for the first time at a bar to family gatherings, etc. You know the drill. If you think of yourself as an environmentalist, you have probably had more than one conversation that left you frustrated and sort of just ready to die. And this video will tell you how to avoid that feeling. Basically, but before we get started, this video is sponsored. This video is sponsored by REN. REN is a long term partner of mine. They are a carbon offsetting initiative where you can donate a certain amount of money each month and then you can place them onto initiatives and programs that you think are important. I think that is a great way of using the sort of carbon offsetting format, which usually and for the most part is just like planting a tree and being done with it. But that's not what Ren is doing. That's also the least effective way of carbon offsetting if we're gonna get into the nitty gritty things. But here you can support every type of initiative from political actions to biodiversity programs, to sustainable energy programs, to water and forest conservation efforts. So many things, so much more effective. And one thing that I really love about REN is their complete transparency. So when you go onto their website, you can see where the money from their supporters is going and you can stay updated on how your resources help this specific program. I think that is such a good way of doing it. So I'm happy to be partnering up with REN once again. And if you use the link down below, you will get your first month of subscription covered for free by Ren. Anyway, let's get into the video. I think one thing that's important for us to determine when we engage in a conversation with someone we do not agree with, someone who doesn't believe in climate change, the science behind it, or just genuinely feel negatively towards the environmentalist movement, is to have a clear goal with that conversation in mind. So are you just picking a fight with someone you disagree with just to pick a fight? Because that's going to be a bad situation, that's going to be a bad conversation for everybody. So think about what your goal is and try to stay on that topic. Is your goal for them to vote green? Is your goal for them to understand a certain type of fact? What is your goal in particular? And try to sort of link that goal to a specific action. So just believing in everything is not really a goal. Even though it might be frustrating, it's important to see things from their perspective and just having someone tell them to just change their entire belief system. If someone did that to you, you would be very unlikely to listen to what they're saying. So try to have a concrete, direct thing that you want them to do and talk about that instead of spiraling in every different direction because then nothing is really going to stick. And if you're just in the mood to pick a fight for no apparent reason, first of all, I get it. Like sometimes you're just in that mood, but then perhaps don't. Keep it simple and on topic. Now, one thing that I have found to be incredibly helpful when talking to people with whom I disagree. Now, my job or like a big part of my job is going out, giving lectures and talks and talking about climate change and sustainability and consumer action specifically. And because of my job, I have face to face met hundreds of people that think I'm an idiot. I often prefer to talk to people with whom I disagree because that's where you grow, that's where you learn something about yourself as well. So one thing I found to be 
overshadowingly important is when you talk to people that have a different perspective on sustainability or climate change from you is that you tie your conversation up on a shared belief or shared value that is incredibly important otherwise you will very easily end up creating like an in-group out-group situation and no one's going to listen to you but if you have something in common if you find common ground and it can be the tiniest thing it can be an interest it can be sort of a preference it can be a political belief it can be this person is stupid but and we need to fix this thing or it, it can be anything from your local community if you find a shared belief or shared value that you can tie the conversation into or you can base your conversation on that is going to help you so much then you're not alienating them from your perspective you're including them and that's what we want because it's very likely that your goal is the same their goal is probably also to care about their loved ones to protect their loved ones to support the local community you're just doing it in different ways so you have different information that makes different actions seem like the best way to do things but they are probably also worried about the future just in a different way and i think including something that makes you feel more similar than different will be incredibly beneficial so framing your conversation around something that you both agree on will create common ground one example i was at a bar and i was talking to a bunch of people i knew like two or three people there but most of the people there I have never met before and I end up sitting next to a guy who is becoming a butcher and his family a butcheress and he's working a lot with meat and I end up saying something about like a vegan option something like that and then he goes like Ugh, and starts talking about how like why would I do that and actually these and these and these things and then just you know black misinformation about what animal agriculture is and I get why you would have that information I get why you would think that because that is like cognitive dissonance in terms of what you're basing your life on and what is wrong or what is often in like the mainstream public media perceived as true or wrong and, like it's a frustrating situation I get why your brain would go that they must be wrong because otherwise I'm like wasting my life something like that. I don't know I don't want to be judgmental it's not the individual or like specific people's fault it's a system it's a faulty food system anyway uh, I start talking to him uh, sort of I chose veganism because the, these and these and these issues um, and he clearly do not agree on anything that I say and then I turn the conversation around and I say but I guess like everybody can agree on that we're like producing way too much meat way too cheaply today. And that's where it sort of clicks for him, sort of like, yeah, because he sees that in his own business as well. And he has people in his like family and like close relations that are like farmers and working with meat. And they are also suffering from this supply chain of incredibly cheaply produced meat products. Like everyone is not having a good time except for the CEO that's sort of making the profit off of it. But it's harder work when you're producing so many cheap things because you have to produce so much, you have no time to do it, you have no time to put care into your craft from that perspective. So we could suddenly agree on the fact that, well, we do need to eat less meat. And I ended up framing the conversation so much so that, well, it's not about everybody going vegan, but it's about people limiting or reducing their consumption of meat. So when they do, in fact, eat meat products, they're good quality. Things have, like people have been paid proper wages, all these kinds of things. And then I end up the conversation with saying like, yeah, and then a reduction of meat in our culture would also mean that more people would choose vegan options as well. Those two things go together. Then he suddenly understood what I was saying. And it was a great conversation and the rest of the night was perfect it was fine so one thing that i think often happens and i've done it myself many times it's you you're talking to someone and they don't believe in climate change they think uh, that animal agriculture isn't problematic they don't see the problem in burning fossil fuels etc you know like something where we have concrete tons of it evidence that shows that that is in fact not true, that animal agriculture is in fact destroying the planet, that emissions from fossil fuels are in fact destroying the planet, that climate change is indeed happening. These things, we have concrete scientific evidence. But one thing that will not make people that do not believe that believe it is just reciting facts and statistics. Even though you might have them in your brain. My brain is full of like facts and studies and statistics and ways of understanding this information. 
But when I'm trying to convince someone that that is indeed true, I'm not going to just recite some facts and some statistics because that can backfire really, really quickly. And also, again, it's kind of an alienating way of speaking because if they do not believe those facts anyway, just reciting numbers is kind of shutting the conversation down. And it's frustrating that it's like that. I know it's frustrating. Like it can be frustrating and true at the same time. So I recommend having like a more empathic or a more holistic approach to this conversation in order to not alienate them completely. It will make them more likely to listen to you. It's not my preferred way of communicating, but in some cases and with some people, it's the most effective. Just reciting facts and statistics can easily create a defensive tone, which is very hard to come back from. And also if you're talking to someone who have been misinformed or are consuming misinformation, their information and their facts and their statistics will, no matter sort of what you do, be more important to them than the facts and statistics that you're reciting. So it's just like two people that do not agree that say numbers to each other. It's not happening. Also in the conversation, in your narrative, validate their perspective. You don't have to agree with them to validate where they're coming from. You don't have to agree with them to speak their language and sort of, again, create this sort of common ground. But that can be in terms of your references, the examples that you're using, try to use something that they have first-hand experience with or use language that they use themselves. You're kind of on the same team, having minor disputes within that team. And it's a lot easier to get people to listen to you if that's what they're feeling. One thing I've found to be incredibly helpful is keeping it personal and down to earth. If you do not believe in climate change statistics and facts and like the, the big numbers aren't going mean shit to you. It's going to be completely irrelevant to your life. So if you're trying to convince people of whatever thing you're doing or trying to make them understand why you are making certain choices, Keep it personal, down to earth. Use your own personal experiences as examples. Talk about things that have been difficult for you or talk about things that might be difficult for them and include examples that they have first-hand experience with or that you have first-hand experience with. That way it will be a lot more practical and less theoretical. And that's overall a much easier way of getting people to understand your point of view. And in addition to that, share your own flaws, make it perfectly clear that you are not perfect. Make it so that you're also sharing things that have been difficult for you or mistakes that you have made because there's not really anything worse than talking to someone that clearly believed them to be better than you. That will make any person not want to listen to what's happening. Stay humble basically, is what I'm trying to say. This is something that took me a little bit of a while to understand, but accept that you cannot change someone's opinion instantly. It takes a long time to change someone's mind if they do not believe in science, if they do not believe in climate change. You're most likely not going to convince them during one conversation, especially so if you're like people that haven't met before, you're just like, creating like not small talk because climate change is not really small talk anymore now i use it as small talk but that's my own issue it's not very likely that you're going to change someone's opinion from one conversation what you can do however is plant a seed and it might take years for that seed to become a tree of proper knowledge and perspective and yeah it's a frustrating situation it's very unlikely you're going to change their mind right away but what you can do is that you can create a positive experience for them where they talked to someone who believed themselves to be like an environmentalist or believing in a thing that they do not believe in and they had a positive conversation with them they had a positive experience exchanging beliefs and perspectives because that is, a, that is another thing to break down this in-group, out-group dynamic. People that believe in climate change and people that don't believe in climate change are sort of butting heads, which is not really what we should be doing. And if you give this person a positive experience, having talked to an environmentalist or a vegan or a zero waster, that will mean that next time they have a conversation with someone, they will be more positively charged, potentially at least. Or they will perhaps have more nuance as to what people in the opposing camp Unlike the amount of times people have had a conversation with me about especially plant-based living and animal agriculture, etc., where they have said to me or to other people that, wow, she's like, she's not one of those judgmental vegans. She's not one of those vegans that are like super preachy. Or like, she's not one of those and then stereotypical things about vegans. And of course, those vegans exist. Those people exist everywhere in every hobby, in every career path in every lifestyle there are always people that are going to feel that way or be that way and it's frustrating but 
the majority of people saying this thing has never talked to vegans before, have just seen videos online or read interviews or like seen things through media that have sort of painted all vegans in that way. Which I guess is because most of the vegans that get to mainstream media get there because they're obnoxious, often at least. It's, it's not everybody, but so often I am the first person that's actually vegan in real life that this person's talking to and they are surprised positively surprised that I am not like that. So give people that experience because it's going to make them a whole lot more open to hearing the talking points that you have if you are differentiating yourself from their stereotype of you. Lastly, pick your battles. It is not your job to convince everybody that climate change is real. It's not your job to make sure everybody makes good choices in terms of impact. It's not your responsibility, babe. Because you might be going into this conversation not there to pick a fight, but to exchange information and to actually better yourself or benefit in one way from this conversation. However, it, it's not necessarily the case the other way around. So if you feel, or if you have a, a, a feeling, it's, it's a sense that they are just there to pick a fight, then just walk away. Walk away, it's not your responsibility. And I think this is something that happens to a lot of people in environmentalist movements, is that we feel so responsible for not only our own impact and our own consumption, but for people around us as well. And that is not our burden to bear. And it's very important for your own personal mental well-being that you start to act that way. Your energy is precious and valuable. And if you have a, a sensation or a feeling that it would be better used in other places, in other conversations, then spare yourself from a conversation with someone who will never believe what you're saying or will always be skeptical, always demeaning towards you. It's, you don't have to listen to them and don't have to talk to them about climate change. It's also completely, perfectly okay to say, I would rather not discuss this right now. I would rather just have a lovely evening. You're allowed to do that. It's a big life hack, by the way. What a cheat code, but you're allowed to say that. Overall, it's not a very effective kind of environmental activism to fight with people who so strongly believe in solidified misinformation. And that's okay. So pick your battles, find out, do you have the energy for it? Is it going to be productive? And if the answer to either of those questions is no, walk away. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or additional tips, leave them down below and share with the group. I hope that you're going to stick around for Earth Month because I'll definitely be back with more content related to how to understand sources and information and science and how to sort of apply that in your everyday life. We're going to talk more about, we're going to talk more about sustainability. Well, yeah, okay, of course we are. This is what the platform is about. But if you're interested in my book, Sustainable Badass, or in Danish, Bæredygtig Badass. I'll leave links down below so you can go and check them out. And if you're looking for a gift for your climate change denying friend or family member, <laughs> shameless self-promoting. Okay, I will uh, leave you guys to it. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!